That wasn't the right neighbor. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Will, you will you take the offer? Will you take the offer? What shall I render to the Lord? What can I give to the Lord that he hasn't given me already? Money, time, and talent. And work. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me. What can I give the Lord that he hasn't given me? If I have any of these, it's because God has given them to me. So the psalmist knows that somehow he needs to give back to God because of all his benefits and blessings God has given me. He is not doing it to get something. He is not motivated by receiving something. He wants to give God something because of all the things he has already, that he has already received. And I'll put a point right there because I want to thank God who is the head of my life. Who brought me from a mighty long way. When I wanted to give up, he said, son, I'm not done with you yet. Amen. I kept running from God. But running isn't what's going to kill you. I want to thank my apostle, who thought it not robbery for me to bless this podium one more time. Thank the fragrance of this house. First lady, I love you. To my brothers and sisters in ministry, God bless you all. And to my beautiful daughter, whom I love so dearly, I thank God for blessing me with her. Yes, sir. And to my son who's not here, I definitely thank God for him. But last and not least, to my queen, to my jewel, to the woman who has prayed for me, even when I wanted to give up. Precious baby, I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. And now back to the word. Yes, Lord. What are the benefits and advantages of taking the offer? Some people think that because you get a job, it's compensation above salary, given to some employees, even a charity. When someone gets a job, they ask, how the benefits? What kind of benefits have you gotten from God, though? Some folk think, oh, I got the new job. Oh, I got this and I got that. But that's not the benefit. Some people think it's the jobs, homes, loved ones, friends, health, finance, finance and, spirit, and even spiritual things. It could be all, all the above. But how can you pay God back for all his kindness? Well. The word says, I will take up my cup of salvation. Mm -hmm. In other words, he will take what God, he will take, in other words, the psalmist put, he will take what God is offering. Right. You see, God is a giver. Well, and if you want to please him, you want to make him happy, bring him joy, then you need to take what he's offering you. Right. Preacher, that's good. When you buy 
a loved one a gift, you're picking out that special gift, not because or because of, so that you can receive a bigger gift. No. You are getting that perfect gift so that, so when, when they receive it, you can see the joy and the excitement in their face. I don't know about you, but I can't hardly wait to give somebody a special gift or a present just to see that expression on their face. There's a stage in life when it's all about giving instead of receiving. Some Christians don't like that. Not us here at St. James, no. But there are some Christians out there that's like that. It brings you happiness to see them happy. Especially when it's a child. God is in the same way he wants to offer us so much more than we've gotten already. But, what, but we have to take and accept it. What he has to give to us. Spiritually, we are living like ramen noodles. We're living on ramen noodles. When we could have a Thanksgiving feast. If you are waiting on your problems not to exist before you can be happy, that's never going to happen in life. Because after one is over, another one comes, and another, and another. You got this problem, and you, will have, you have one after another if you live long enough. My happiness may not be in my circumstance, but they can always, but it can always, but it can always be found in the Lord. I don't have to be happy about my situation, but I can be happy about God. Well, yes. Philippians 4 and 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice. In everything, not just good things, not just pleasant things, not just the enjoyable things, but in everything. How can I be with all the problems I got? I have to somehow find a way to be happy. I can't try to fix this problem and fix that problem when I know where the answer lies. No question. No. The question is, how can you not be happy in the Lord? Because that's where the joy comes from. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Have you ever given a gift to a person and the person you gave it to didn't appreciate what you gave them? They didn't even appreciate all the time and effort you spent in getting this gift. Talk about it. Getting up early, standing in line, fighting the crowds, going into debt. Well, didn't that hurt? Do you think it hurts God? That when we turn down what he has to offer. Wow. Jesus. Wow. See, us here at St. James, we know, but there's other Christians that don't. He wants you to appreciate what he is offering you. He wants you to think about the sacrifice that he made. So that you can have eternal life and all the blessings that go with it. What he is what he is offering beside what is he offering you besides eternal life? Will you take the offer that God is giving you? Will you, take it? Will you take the offer from God? He has died for you so that you can live. He has given you eternal life and life abundantly. See, the songwriter wrote, wrote, writes, he brought, he brought me through this and he brought me through that. 